Do this to stay one step ahead. Now, when it comes to your life, when it comes to your investments, when it comes to your business, you need to stay one step ahead. You need to stay one step ahead of your competition in your business. You need to stay one step ahead of other investors when you're investing in the stock market. You need to stay one step ahead of your government and regulators as they come to try to take it from you. So in this video, I'm going to break down how easy it actually is to stay one step ahead if you're paying attention. We're going to look at a new story that just came out that's going to tell us exactly what's going to happen to you, your money, your investments, and your business. Then we're going to break it down to show you what you can actually do based off this news to stay one step ahead. Now, I've been accused a lot of doom and gloom videos, and that is not my worldview. I believe there's massive hope and prosperity, but it's important to understand the situation so we know how to navigate it properly. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. So let's go. All right, welcome back. About 360,000 of you, and I appreciate each and every one of you. It gives me great hope for the future because I know you're all the sleeping lions that have woken up. And look, this channel is not a doom and gloom channel. I've been accused of that. I have massive hope and prosperity because each one of you are waking up. You're sharing this information. And we use this information, although it looks bad on the outside, we use it so we can make our lives better. So let's go ahead and jump into this video. We'll talk about that. All right, now, <laughs> they're coming for you. That doesn't sound good. I know, it's all doom and gloom, Mark. No, let me show you what we're gonna do about this. They are coming for you, what do I mean by that? Well, it's probably no surprise, I've talked about it enough, you've seen it all over the news over the last week or two. The IRS, these guys, everybody's worst fear, the two things you can't escape in life, death and taxes. That's right, you can't escape either. They have decided to give the IRS 80 billion, with a B, 80 billion dollars to hire 87,000 new IRS agents. Now, there's a lot into this story that I can go into. Uh, the you know, president's private police state, what they're doing with it. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit trail here, but I want you to know just the size of this and what this means, of course, then what we're gonna do about it. All right, so <laughs> this is six times the annual budget of the IRS. That means they're growing the size of this, the IRS by six times. Uh, their original budget is $12 billion. They are dedicating 45 billion of it for enforcement. Enforcement, that doesn't sound good, does it? Enforcing taxes, making sure you pay your fair share, and they hope to get 124 billion of increased revenue. Now, this is nothing new. Since the beginning of time, the kings, uh, the governments, whatever, they wanna tax people, and they wanna tax people to the point that the people break. As a matter of fact, I pulled up a clip from one of my favorite cartoons when I was a kid. Let's go back in history and watch this clip right here. Oh, they are, are they? Well, they'll be singing a different tune. Double the taxes, triple the taxes, squeeze every last drop out of those insolent musical peasants. All right, so you can see, uh, and we, we saw this stuff in cartoons as we were kids. Of course, Disney's woke these days. They would never show you that anymore. But that's the way it works. Kings would extract as much wealth as they could from the citizens, obviously to enrich themselves and to go fight wars, things like that. And they did it all through tax enforcement, which we can see is happening. Okay, now, uh, this is all being part of this new bill called the Inflation Reduction Act. We're gonna call it IRA, so I don't have to keep repeating this long word again. Uh, and stick with me till the end because we're gonna bring this all around. Okay, the Inflation Reduction Act, just know right off the bat, whatever they name a bill, it's going to have the opposite results. So if they name something, uh, save the Puppies Act, it's probably gonna be killing puppies. But they, they name it that because who would be against that? Everybody hates inflation. It's the number one cause for concern right now. I'm gonna show you a poll in a little bit to show you what Americans are most concerned about. They're, all, they're most concerned about the economy. They're most concerned they can't afford gas or food, right? So let's name a bill, the Inflation Reduction Act, and who could be against it? It's a $437 billion spending package. Now, I don't know how anybody believes that they could just print more money and that would actually reduce inflation, but nevertheless, that's what they did. Of course, Senator Joe Manchin that we have right here showed on this left side of the picture here, he was the last holdout of the Democrats. He was the one that killed the original Build Back Better bill and now was the one that finally signed on the dotted line to bring this IRA, Inflation Reduction Act, into existence. However, when Senator Joe Manchin was asked, hey, how is this going to reduce inflation? What did Manchin say? Uh, correspondent Hillary Vaughn asked Manchin whether Democrats misled Americans by claiming the bill would reduce inflation and thus 
lower the price of everyday goods. And Manchin said, why would it? <laughs> why would it lower inflation? Well, because that's the name. So I guess you did mislead people and you get the answer to that. Um, he went on to say, obviously, it won't work. Now, we can see that there's been multiple analysis done on this, multiple nonpartisan analysis done on the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA. And in the CBO, this is the Congressional Budget Office. This isn't a right wing or a left wing. This is the, Congre this is the government's own office, CBO. Assessment in calendar year 2023, next year, inflation would probably be between 0.1% lower and 0.1% higher. So that's zero. 0.1 zero higher or 0.1 lower? It's going to be somewhere in between that. So meaning zero. All right. Uh, the Penn Wharton budget model reached the exact same conclusion. This is going to do nothing for inflation. As Senator Joe Manchin said, why would it? Now of this, what's important to understand is that $369 billion or 85% of the money that was put in to do what? Reduce inflation, make prices cheaper for you, right? 85% of that money is actually going to fight climate change. As a matter of fact, we have here from CNN. CNN says that as the bill, this is quote, as the bill came closer to being signed into law, more media outlets began referring to it as climate and health bill instead. Citing 369 billion are going towards investments in energy, security, and climate change. Wait a minute. I thought it was for reducing inflation. It's called the Inflation Reduction Act. But why is 85% of the money going to fight energy security and climate change? And the New York Times said the same thing. It said uh, the bill signed into law by President Biden makes $369 billion in climate and energy investments. Wait a minute. I thought I was supposed to reduce my prices. I didn't want to do anything about investing in the climate and energy. Second of all, how are you calling it an investment? That's a complete lie. As a matter of fact, if I was a stock promoter, the SEC would be suing me right now for calling it an investment, even potentially jail time if the SEC were on the case. An investment is something, one, a person does willingly. Two, in the hopes of a gain. There's no gain here. All right, now, does anyone even care? So there was a poll done, um, a very big poll, I think it was by uh, the Pew, Pew did it, and it said, what is the most important problems facing the country today? Now this is this year, this is uh, 2022, and what we can see here, the number one cause for concern of Americans right now, as of July 22, 35% are economic problems. They said the cost of living is too high. That's the number one concern, of course, which is why they named this the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, they also care about the economy in general. They care about fuel prices. They care about the gap between the rich and poor. They care about unemployment, corporation. They care about lack of money, wage issues, federal budget, taxes, foreign trade, the deficit. They care about a lot of things. And we keep going. The government leadership, they don't like it. Abortion, judicial, unifying the country, immigration, gun control, blah, 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 blah. Oh, all the way down here, we have environment. Now they lump this together, environment, pollution, climate. I love the environment. I'm in the ocean every day. I like to go snowboarding. I want the pollution to stay low, but I don't really care about climate change as much, and neither does the average American. As a matter of fact, we have about 2% of people's cares are about that. All the cares are about this kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, people care more about punk, uh, poverty, hunger, homelessness. People care more about energy and lack of energy. Uh, people care more about health care. Nobody cares about climate. But that's where all the money went, of course. And they had to name it the Inflation Reduction Act, which is what everybody cares about. If they would have named it the let's, let's spend $369 billion to fight climate change, nobody would have voted for it. Now, the key that I wanted to do is show you that they're coming for you regardless of what tax bracket you're in. I'm going to give you actionable steps that you can do uh, with this. All right, so it's not just the rich. Now, Biden promised in his own words, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to say it. Let's hear it directly from the President of the United States. Let's play that clip. And I'm keeping my campaign commitment. No one, let me emphasize, no one earning less than $400,000 a year will pay a penny more in federal taxes. All right, so you heard it. He said, he guarantees, he promises, if you make under $400,000, your taxes will not go up by one penny. It's his words, not mine. Now, if you believe him, Maybe I got a bridge I can sell you too. All right, let's keep going. He said that under $400,000 are not affected. Now, Senator Mike Crapo, he's a Republican from Idaho, he put in the bill, an actual piece in the bill to say that taxes on people under $400,000 won't go up. Of course, that was struck down. 
Nobody wanted to vote for that. Why? Because what Biden said wasn't true. Because they were going to raise taxes. If, if what he said was true, then why wouldn't they have approved that? And of course, the answer is they didn't. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and we break this down. We can see here in 2023 next year, taxes will increase by 16, almost 17 billion on American taxpayers earning less than $200,000. Now I get it. If you're in Kansas and you're a single person, 200,000 is pretty good. If you live in New York City or in Southern California and you got a family, you're barely getting by. All right, I get it. Like, it depends on where you live, but that's not rich, okay? Throughout the 10 year window, the average tax rate for nearly every single income category would increase. By 2031, when the new green energy credits and subsidies provide an even greater benefit to those at higher incomes, those earning below 400,000 are projected to bear as much as two thirds, two thirds of the budget. So, people under 400,000 will actually pay for the majority of that. We can see here, it says that the taxes would the raise taxes on millions of Americans earning less than 400,000 annually. Taxes would jump by 16, almost 17 billion. Uh, okay, it's kind of the same thing we just talked about. And here per the Tax Foundation, and this is where the unintended consequences kicked in, per the Tax Foundation, the Inflation Reduction Act would reduce long run economic output by 0.2%. Not a lot, but it's gonna reduce economic output and eliminate about almost 30,000 full-time jobs at a time when we're supposed to get in more people to work, more people to work, more business to do good, the GDP goes up. Nope, it's actually gonna do the opposite, reduce GDP and reduce jobs as well. And it says reduce average after-tax incomes for taxpayers across every single income bracket. Quintile is what it says. So everyone's going to be affected by taxes and we're also going to be affected by the decrease in the economy and the decrease in jobs. By reducing long run economic growth, this bill may actually worsen inflation by constraining the productive capacity of the economy. So not only are you going to be poor because they're going to take more of your money before taxes, you're also going to be poor because there's going to be less money moving around in the economy. Doesn't sound super good. Now, how are we going to stay a step ahead of this? All right, right now, the markets have been crashing. They've been kind of recovering, but it looks like it's a bear market rally, probably a fake out. There's probably more pain ahead. Assets are cheap, but could there be more pain ahead? Here we have the charts. We can see it's bouncing just perfectly like it's ready to go back down again. Now, Larry Summers, somebody we should listen to. He used to be the head of the Treasury. He still got a lot of pull, still got a lot of influence with the Treasury and the Federal Reserve. He says that the Fed needs to deliver a message on more economic pain. We need more pain. As a matter of fact, let's hear it directly from his mouth. Let's play that clip. The big event of the week, of course, are those meetings out in Jackson Hole. Larry Summers, what are your best hopes and what are your worst fears for those meetings? My hope is that we will get clarity that policy is not yet restrictive, that it needs to be restrictive if we're going to contain inflation, and that we'll need to accept uh, the consequences of that. So he says his biggest fear is that they're going to be too soft. The Fed needs to bring the pain. They need to crush the stock market. They need to bring asset prices down. Now that sounds bad. However, we can also look at it as an opportunity because I like to buy things when they're cheap. So if prices come down even more, we could see historic buying opportunities on blue chip companies, world dominators, I like to call them, the Hershey's chocolate, the Microsoft's, the Amazon's. We could have amazing opportunities to buy those assets. Um, tech assets that could go up by hundreds of percent. Of course, one of my favorite assets, Bitcoin. What we can see that it is historically cheap right here. Sub in whatever asset you like if you don't like Bitcoin. But what we can see, and I put this chart up before in this previous video, and uh, we'll go ahead and link it up here if you want to go watch it. But basically, I showed any time that Bitcoin has reached this level, it's been a historic buying opportunity. The last two times, it returned almost 350% uh, here and 1600% there. And here we are touching that area again. So it looks like it's historically cheap. Like I, did, like I said, sub in whatever asset you want. I think all the world dominators are going to be extreme buys. We're going to have the, the sell of a lifetime to buy these assets. But hang on, let me show you how we're going to turbocharge this and build it up, regardless of what asset you want. But as far as Bitcoin goes, real quick, if you want to watch this video right here, I break down the math of where I think Bitcoin could go and make the case where I could easily see Bitcoin hitting $1.2 million per coin, which would be a massive run. However, 
how can we maximize that when they're trying to increase our taxes and continue to take more and more and more, just like the Robin Hood cartoon that I showed you. All right, there's a way we can get tax-free gains. There's an IRA and there's a Roth IRA. An IRA allows you to put money in before you pay tax, but when you pull it out, you gotta pay more, you gotta pay tax on it. I don't like that because, simple question, do you think taxes will be higher or lower in the future? My guess is they're higher, so I don't like that. What I like is the Roth IRA. The Roth IRA allows me to put assets in like Bitcoin today, or my Microsoft stock, or my Amazon stock, or my Tesla, whatever I like. It allows me to put that into my Roth IRA, and allows me to trade back and forth through them, and none of that is a taxable event. And then, let's say that Bitcoin I buy it at 20,000 today goes to two million in 10 years from now. I can have all of that gain tax-free, without paying any tax on it. It's a pretty good option. It's one that I use. It's one that I recommend you use as well. Now, the one thing I'd like to say about the Bitcoins piece specifically is as we've learned, if we've learned anything at all through the Terra Luna crash, the Celsius crash, the Voyager crash, the Three Years Capital, all that. If it's not your keys, it's not your coins. If you don't hold it, just like gold, when we kept the gold in the banks in 1933, the government seized all our gold. I hold gold in my own vault today. I control it. Just like I like to control my Bitcoin. The problem is if I use an IRA, a Roth IRA, I have to give it up to somebody else. I don't like that risk. Uh, I've been working with a company called Unchained Capital and they allow me to hold the private key so that I don't have that risk of counterparty risk. So it allows me to buy these assets, trophy assets today, as the market is getting hit hard by the Fed trying to crush it. Bitcoin's at historic cheap buying opportunities. I can buy those assets today I can hold them, custody them myself, and allow them to grow tax-free, potentially helping me stay one step ahead of those 87,000 new agents who are coming to enforce the laws on you. Um, if you'd like to know more about Unchained Cap, there's a link down in the bio. It's something that I use. This is not a paid or sponsored video, so I'll, I'll declare that right now, but I, will, I do use them. I do recommend it. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out. It's something I recommend. Either way, a lot of bad news coming out. Use the bad news as a chance to pivot and use it to your opportunity. In times of change is where that opportunity is. And so while the IRS is beefing things up, we can stay a step ahead by shielding our investments, our stock market investments, our Bitcoin investments from them. That's what I'm doing. Let me know what you think. Would you use a Roth IRA to grow your taxes and stay one step ahead of the tax enforcers that are coming after you? Leave me a comment down below. And let me know what you think. Of course, as always, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. If you don't, it's okay. You can give me a thumbs down, but at least tell me why. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when I put new videos out. And that's what I got. All right, to your success. I'm out. Since you've stayed to the end, I know you like this video, which means you're probably gonna really like this video right here and this video right here.